Hi everybody, Marty Geyer here from your AI class again, and welcome to another video lecture. I've gotten some, a couple good feedback uh, points from people that this has been useful, so I want to continue and I want to help. We're going to march on into uh, Chapter 5, and instead of the labs, I'm going to move away from that slightly and talk about uh, some of the concepts, because I have a sneaking suspicion that this material gets kind of dense, uh, and it's not solidifying in everybody's head instantly. Uh, if I'm wrong, awesome, delete this video, you understand everything good. If not, bear with me and let's talk about a few of these concepts. So, uh, we have our 4x4 puzzle, 3x3 and 2x2. We're going to continue the same example with the uh, 8 puzzle variants because it's what we know and it's easy, easiest to kind of explain. Uh, I'm sure you all are brilliantly familiar with them by now uh, and love with them, in fact, after the first uh, three labs, right? Never want to see them again. but. It serves a good example here, so bear with me. Um, first thing I want to talk about is the branching factor with these things. So let's start with a two by two puzzle and explain what this means and get an idea concept of how many nodes you're really looking through with these search algorithms. I think you have some sense of doing this from your lab, how big this actually gets in the four by four puzzle, but we want to assign some mathematics to it and have you follow along. So on a two by two puzzle, let's take the example three one space two. Now you uh, there's two ways to go at any given point, right? You can either move the three down or move the two over. Uh, and that's always true in any case here. Now, notice that one way is always backwards. You're always going back to the previous state you are, were in. One way is going forward. Except the very first state, then you essentially have two states. But if we ignore that condition, I have two states at, at first, this one or this one. After that, there's only one state. You can either go back up or you go down here. So you have a branching factor of, of 1, essentially. So this first state is a special case, or maybe it's just 1 plus uh, times the rest of the depth. So to determine the number of nodes you're looking for, what you do is you take the depth to the branch power. So at a depth of 1, which is right here, it's 1 to the branching factor, which is 1, power, which is just 1. So this is a uh, branching, or sorry, total number of nodes that you're looking through is 1. Down one more, this is depth 2, now you get 2 to the branching factor power, which is 2 to the 1, which is 2. And of course, multiplying that by 2, because in the beginning we have that 2 branches. Now I think you can see how this works. You know, 10 to the first power is 10, times 2 again for the 2 branches, and so on. So no matter how far you go down, it's always going to be just one more. This is a nice mathematical formula for the 2x2 two two puzzle. In the 3x3 three three puzzle, what happens is in this middle state you have four ways you can go, right? On the corner state you have two, and on the other ones in between you have three. So this comes out to some weird number, a uh, little more than two and a half. Um, let's just call it two and a half for the fun of it, because I don't want to deal with, well, let's just call it two, in fact, because I don't want to deal with uh, unround numbers, even though we're not being precise, so forgive me. So what we have here is the same thing, depth to the branching factor. And again, you're going to have the first state going to be slightly different. But after that, two here, three there, on average, because we're talking about an average move on the puzzle, not any specific move, we're going to have, we're calling it two, branching factor. So an average depth of one, you get one to the two. And on average depth of five, you get five to the two, which is 25. And you can see this kind of goes up pretty quickly, especially when you use the real number, which is more than two, two and a half, et cetera. This is going to go up pretty fast, especially when we move to our friend the four puzzle. When we move to our friend the four puzzle, this number is much higher. Right? We got two on the corners, three in the intermediaries, um, and four in the center up here. Um, quick math, I'm not sure what that comes out to. Three and a half something or others. A little less than three and a half. So three and a half, again, to the one at depth one. And, or sorry, the other way around. Depth one to the three and a half. And then at depth ten, you got ten to the three and a half. <coughs> well, this is a rather big number. You don't trust me, you can do it on a calculator, but you know, 10 to any power, start adding zero. So 10 to the 2 to the 3 
three and a half. Yeah, okay, so five thousand go up by almost ten, a car or ten. So already at depth ten on the four puzzle, you've got five thousand ish nodes that you're looking through. And that's kind of why it certainly takes a huge long time <coughs> to go through when you're when you're programming. Now your program, AI program, or any program that you write can only research or go through so many states before um, you just don't have any time anymore. So if you go down further and further and further, this is going to be explosive. And that's why you have a problem, right? So things like chess, where then a branching factor is massive. You don't have just one or two moves, but you can make any of, I don't know what it is, 50 moves, etc. Then just going down a couple levels is already very, very big. And you can see why computers have trouble with chess and games with huge branching factors like that. Because <clears throat> you just simply can't explore all those, all those uh, branches at once which is why we're developing these techniques. But anyway, I digress. So jumping forward now <coughs> with what we learned about branching factors to stochastic games, I want you to understand what's going on here. So suppose we now have uh, two of the 2 by 2 puzzles, and we have a, a, a two-sided die, which it doesn't exist. That would be called a coin, I guess. So we have a coin, flip a coin. We have two, 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 two by two puzzles, flip a coin. If it's heads, we move on this board. And if it's tails, we move on another board over here. It doesn't really matter for the sake of argument which board um, or what we're actually doing here, just trying to solve two boards. But at this point, if you're trying to predict what's going on, notice that the number of states is now doubled. Because now, if the die roll is heads, then you can move one way over here. If the die roll is tails, you're going to move over here. You don't know ahead of time which way that coin is going to go. So now you have to, if you're predicting, like you do with the minimax algorithm, you have to evaluate nodes down both sides of the tree. So you effectively multiply this by two. Sure enough, this extends out if you have a six-sided die, as you would with the mini games, like for example, backgammon. Or worse, you have two dies, and you have 12 possible states. So if you have 12 possible states, then you're multiplying your branching factor by 12. So you take that formula we were talking about and multiply it by the number of random chance nodes at any given time, um, which ends up being a, another factor. So depth to the, to the uh, power of uh, random die states. I know you can't see up here. but um, So basically, you're multiplying by another exponent. So when we have that depth to the branching factor, uh, which for three puzzles, say, depth 10, 10 to 3 and a half. If you had a random six of these, now you have to multiply it by 10 to the sixth. Because each time, at each level when you go down, you've got six possibilities behind each of those states. So you can go down once, six more possibilities, go down twice, and you have exponential more possibilities. So what, what's going on here is you're multiplying by a huge massive number. Now notice just what happened here just on this puzzle down to 10 nodes, 10 to the 3 and a half is already a big number. We just multiplied it by 10 to the 6. And now it's completely unmanageable much earlier in the problem. <coughs> and that's kind of what's going on. So with uh, stochastic games, you, you have this huge, bigger branch that you cannot, cannot do. And that's why we talk about uh, different algorithms for approaching the problem, because we can't actually keep going this way. <coughs> 